Metabolism, the answer to fat loss, muscle gain, everything. The mysterious concept behind why some people barely eat anything and have a high body fat percentage, and why some can eat intuitively anything they want and still be fit and healthy. And I have, surprise, surprise, been in both shoes. Here's what I learned from years of cracking down the code to my metabolism. Hello and welcome back to a diet and fitness video, which I have not done in like a decade because I feel like working out and eating well, eating less restrictively and more intuitively has become so natural to me that it's just part of my life now. But occasionally when I meet new friends and eat with people who I have not eaten with before, I always get the shock reaction of, oh my God, you eat this much? This much? This much? Or, oh my gosh, I thought you're the type to only eat salads and sip on celery juice. And like, I get it. I have a small frame and a low body fat percentage, so most people naturally assume that I barely eat a grain every day until they eat with me and realize that on a day I have a good appetite, which is basically every single day, I can eat as much as, if not more than, the average male. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so much. But what's crazy is that not that long ago, I was the one munching on two chicken drumsticks and kale every single day and was puffy in the sense that I had a pretty high body fat percentage and to be honest, was just weak. I was like puffy skinny if you will. Light on the scale, but not much muscle, not much strength, and had still quite a bit of body fat. And was always hungry, because let's face it, a super low calorie diet is problematic for so many reasons. So today, I just really want to share with you some of the things I learned from my past dieting mistakes. There were many, <laughs> what I changed, and some tips on enhancing your metabolism to be more efficient. To start off, what the heck is metabolism? In simplest terms, metabolism is a process by which your body converts what you eat and drink into energy. It includes all the chemical reactions occurring in your body that's allowing you to digest, think, move, breathe, and stay alive. Thank you, metabolism. There are four components to metabolism that you should be aware of. Resting metabolic rate, activity level, the thermic effect of food, and NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Sorry, there is construction. Quick explanation. Resting metabolic rate is the expenditure of energy just staying alive without doing anything. This surprisingly accounts for the majority, 60 to 75% of total daily energy burn. Activity level is energy expended by going to the gym, playing a sport, accounting for 15 to 30% of energy expenditure. The thermic effect of food is the energy expended during the process of digestion, which will be impacted by the types of food you eat and account for roughly 10% of energy expenditure. And NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. These are movements that individuals make that are not planned but are done spontaneously, often without realizing, like pacing, fidgeting, or using your hands when talking. It accounts for 5% of one's total daily expenditure but could add up if these subconscious movements are frequent. When it comes down to the cards you can actually play with your metabolism, it really just simplifies to the classic food and exercise. Sounds simple, but trust me, I've made a fair share of mistakes that actually crashed my metabolism. So pay attention. You're welcome. Exercise. Quick reminder, resting metabolic rate accounts for 60 to 75% of total daily energy burn. So ideally, if you want to boost your metabolism, this will be a major area to target. And the good news is, your resting metabolic rate is dependent on how active you are. For those of you who absolutely hate moving your bodies, I understand you, I can relate to you, I was in that boat too, but I got news for you. Your metabolism will not improve if 
you choose to not be active, period. I once thought I could just take the easy way out and not exercise and just eat the bare minimal calories, which was literally starvation. Sure, I lost weight, but weight is not indicative of anything. I probably lost a lot of muscles, which slowed down my metabolism even further. Lean muscle mass actually determines 74 to 80% of your resting metabolic rate. Those who are very active and have a high degree of lean muscle mass will naturally metabolize faster. And I don't know what your end goal is, but if it's weight loss or fat loss, I'm going to give it to you straight right now. That cannot be your end goal because it is not sustainable. Yes, you may lose some weight, perhaps even to the detriment of your health. But if you don't start with a holistic, healthy mindset, it doesn't change anything from the roots. It's like cutting weeds out. If you only cut them, they will grow back because the roots are still there. What I ultimately did back in the days was I only did cardio to burn calories, only viewed food as calories, only ate a certain type of food because they were quote unquote diet friendly, all surface level work. Once I ate the amount my body actually needs, it all bounced back because my metabolism, my body's equilibrium has not been changed at all. Only when my goal changed from weight loss to adopting a healthier, stronger lifestyle did my metabolism improve. And the weight loss, the fat loss were only the byproducts. And guess what? Exercising for weight loss I hated it. It felt like something I had to do, and I focused on burning calories. But exercising for the sake of becoming healthier and stronger is fun. I started picking up strength training, and you won't see a difference in a day, a week, or even a month. But over time, you'll notice something magical, that you can lift heavier than you did months ago, and that your energy level is up, your appetite is up, and those lines in your muscle groups start showing up as they develop stronger while helping you burn more fat away. I kid you not, fitness has changed my life in the most unimaginable ways, best ways possible. It has helped me improve my health, my habits, my relationship with myself, and pushed me to love the discomfort of challenging the limit and surpassing old limits. Experts recommend strength training exercises such as weightlifting at least twice a week. Strength training is important because it helps build muscle. Muscle tissues burn more calories than fat tissues do and essentially enable you to do more with your body, which also increases the activity portion of the metabolism pie. And coming from someone who was super intimidated to go to the gym with all the big sweaty gym bros, I know it's not easy to start, but Everyone started from somewhere. Even those gym bros make the decisions that your future self will thank you for. Now food. As you all know, I am a foodie at heart and I cannot believe that I tormented myself to low-key starve and eat food I hate for the sake of calories just to lose weight. And it didn't even work because all I did was to slow down my metabolism. So first rule of thumb is you never ever starve yourself. And I'll say this again because it is important. Never ever starve yourself for any reason. Unless if someone is holding the gun to your head, then for survival, you can compromise. When it comes to food, it's a whole other huge topic. I could go hours and hours to talk about how I went on an added sugar-free diet and did this and that, but that could be for another time. Right now, I'm just at the stage where I genuinely enjoy minimally processed foods and whole foods. But I also think life is too short to miss out on your favorite foods, whatever that may be. Again, your diet is like a whole painting. If you ever had an ice cream or a piece of cake, it does not mean you don't care about your health. Oh no, mine like fell, like collapsed. <laughs> It does not mean your metabolism will lose its efficiency. Everyone's so different and you need to find your own balance. But on the topic of metabolism, just remember that the thermic effect of food, your digestion still accounts for roughly 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. Your BMR will rise after you eat because there is a certain amount of energy required to digest the food and what you eat will impact that. So from a macronutrient perspective, fats will raise your resting metabolic rate by zero to 5%, carbohydrates will raise your BMR by 5 to 
proteins will raise your BMR by 20 to 30 percent, which is why protein is super key to enhancing your metabolism. A, because it raises your basal metabolic rate or your BMR more than carbs and fats. And B, protein is the building blocks of our muscles and more muscles mean higher metabolic rate, which comes back in full circle. By the way, I always link my favorite protein powders in the description in case if you don't get enough in your diet and these ones are delicious. Last tip about food, fiber is really good to incorporate into your diet because it takes more energy to digest. It is more satiating because it absorbs a lot more water in your GI tract and it naturally comes with a lot of vitamins and phytochemicals from the plant source. So that is all I wanted to share today about boosting metabolism. Really guys, take the time and reflect on why you want to enhance your metabolism and remind yourself that with all changes, it will take time for results to show, but your body is yours to take care of for a lifetime. So it's worth it to make the investment to build a stronger foundation for the future. Don't forget to like, whatever. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram to join my growth journey. I'll see you next week. Bye. the end.